We remember today as one of the most significant events in our nation's history. It marks over 100 years since the day of armistice concluded World War I. Over 100 years after the guns went silent on the Western Front, each and every one of us can pause to reflect on the immense sacrifices made by so many. We remember those members of our community who made that ultimate sacrifice so that we can live a life of freedom. A life where conflict can be managed without the need to go to war. There are many reasons to remember our fallen service men and women from the First World War. They may have been your relatives, come from your area, or shared your name. But the most important reason is to make sure that they are not forgotten. By wearing a poppy, you commemorate every one of the service men and service women of the First World War and all subsequent wars who died and ensure that their memory lives on. Between July 1914 and November 1918, over 18 million men, women and children perished in World War I or the Great War. It was a staggering and incalculable loss of life. And it was at that point the greatest number of dead in any event in human history. The peace conference that followed the war at Versailles in 1919 was to sow the seeds of an even more horrible war 20 years later. And this war, this war was very much a global war lasting from 1939 to 1945. It was the deadliest conflict in human history marked by 70 to 85 million fatalities, most of whom were civilian. It included massacres, the genocide of the Holocaust, strategic bombing, premeditated death from starvation and disease, and the only use of nuclear weapons in a war. This remembrance service is for all those that gave their life for our country, but also for the women, men, boys and girls, sisters and brothers, grandmothers and grandfathers who lost their lives or their loved ones in Europe and the Middle East over 100 years ago. It was during the Great War that Wilfred Owen, a poet and soldier, wrote poems of staggering sadness and beauty from the front lines. He died in battle just one week before the war ended. His mother actually received the notice of his death on Armistice Day, as the bells in her village were ringing joyously to mark the end of the fighting. One of Owen's poems described a gas attack on a line of British soldiers on the Western Front. Here are some of Owen's final lines as he paints a picture of a young man dying of mustard gas in his lungs. If, in some smothering dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, bitter as the cud of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. A line borrowed from the Roman poet Horace, sweet and just to die for one's country. That poem rings a warning bell over 100 years later from the disaffected young Brits who fought in a fruitless war. And that warning is to us. A warning that our leaders today must be mindful as they talk sometimes too blithely of waging wars of choice. The Great War reminds us of the danger and risk of starting a war when we can never be sure where it will lead, how many will die, and how it will end. So, we remember all those that gave their lives for our freedom. 
We remember the civilians that suffered and died as a result of war. We remember the families of those affected by war. The numbers of lives lost and affected by war is hard for us all to comprehend, but in wearing a poppy, we remember and honour them all. The Greenock Academy War Memorial is located in the administration corridor here just outside the school office. The War Memorial is another way in which we remember those students from Greenock Academy and the local area who sacrificed their lives in the two world wars. Please take the opportunity to pay your respects as you pass by. Why we remember? It was on the 11th hour of the 11th day in the 11th month in 1918 that the guns fell silent on the Western Front to, and so to bring an end to what became known as the First World War, the carnage came to an end. Our nation and Commonwealth has recalled that moment through our armistice and remembrance events down through the decades. Decades in which men and women of our armed services have continued to pay the ultimate sacrifice in the defence of freedom and justice. And so over a hundred years since this outbreak we stand here today to remember lives sacrificed in that service of our country and also those traumatised and injured in conflict. May we have such a devotion to justice and freedom that the heroism of all who fought and indeed who still fight may continue to be remembered in our nation and to create a world of peace. We remember Ypres, Gallipoli, the Somme, Mons and Verdun. We remember the Western Desert, El Alamein, the Normandy beaches. We remember Coventry, Dresden, Hiroshima and the Burma Road. We remember Korea, the Falkland Islands, Northern Ireland, the Balkans, East Timor, the Gulf and Afghanistan. We remember the courage, the comradeship, the ingenuity, the spirit of working together for a common cause, the planning together for a better world that would come with peace. We remember the call to arms, the patriotic songs, the partings for which were such sweet sorrow, the sound of the drum, the skirl of the pipe, the prayer that God would be on our side. We remember the carnage, the colossal horror of war. We remember the widows of 60 years and more, the old men and women who never knew their fathers. We remember the love that was lost, the wisdom wasted, the minds that are still pained by memories. We remember the families bereft by recent wars and conflict. We remember this day, the children who will die while nation fights nation. We remember the one who asks us to remember them. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humankind. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
Red Cross Nurses by Thomas L. Masson. Out where the line of battle cleaves the horizon of woe, and sightless warriors clutch the leaves, the Red Cross nurses go. In where the cots of agony mark death's unmeasured tide, bear up the battle's harvestry, the Red Cross nurses glide. Look where the hell of steel has torn its way through slumbering earth, the orphaned urchins kneel forlorn and wonder at their birth until above them, calm and wise, with smile and guiding hand, God looking through their gentle eyes, the Red Cross nurses stand. In the quiet, misty morning, when the moon has gone to A Soldier Cemetery by John William Street. Behind that long and lonely trenched line to which men come and go, where brave men die, there is yet unmarked and unknown shrine, a broken plot, a soldier cemetery. There lie the flower of youth, the men who scorned to live so died when languished liberty. Across their graves, flowerless and unadorned, still scream the shells of each artillery. When war shall cease this lonely, unknown spot of many a pilgrimage 
will be the end. And flowers will shine in this now barren plot, and fame upon it through the years descend. But many a heart upon each simple cross will hang the grief, the memory of its loss. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our, our universe. universe.